Donc, euh, je vais passer la parole au dernier orateur de la matinée, M. Adrien Poliliescu, euh, qui m'a dit qu'il n'en avait pas pour très longtemps. Euh, et donc, je lui donne immédiatement la parole, après quoi nous ouvrirons le débat. Merci beaucoup. Et je m'excuse pour changer de langue. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for being late. And in order to make up for this guilt that I acknowledge, I shall be very, very brief. Actually, I won't make a presentation, but rather uh, tell you about two worries that we have in social philosophy about uh, the balanced budget rules and their influence on social solidarity. I won't uh, bore you with the definitions of social solidarity, but I'll confess that I am working on the hypothesis that social solidarity at least implies uh, some concern uh, for the fulfillment of basic needs, or if we accept uh, the concepts of the uh, famous uh, British political philosophers Henry Shu for the fulfillment of basic rights to um, of humans. Now, uh, my first uh, question is the following, my, my first worry. Should or should not BBR be systematically connected in the Constitution to the problem of basic needs fulfillment, basic rights, uh, shoes term of present and future generations. Uh, in this question, of course, the key word is systematically. What do I mean by that? Um, by systematically, I mean not introducing the requirement of suspending the enforcement of BBR as an exception justified by some special situations such as natural catastrophe, war, and so on and so forth. And second, not introducing the BBR first and then seeking ways to conciliate their requirements with the requirements of basic rights fulfillment. Um, I, I venture to uh, propose the hypothesis that perhaps in the developed countries, the necessity to prioritize supplementary spending dedicated to fulfillment of basic rights and thus break BBR might be seen as exceptional, although perhaps not even there always. But in developing countries and in very poor countries, unfulfilled basic rights are chronic, not exceptional, and the worry is whether we should or should not make a systematic connection in the Constitution between the priority of uh, ensuring the fulfillment of basic rights and the priority of PPR. Of course, the danger is, and we are all aware of that, that once we make such a connection systematically, the enforcement of the BBR would be endangered. I mean, it would be very difficult to justify the priority of the BBR enforcement over various uh, basic needs which are unfulfilled and basic rights and so on and so forth. My second worry uh, is whether the BBR can be made to act impartially and not almost inevitably affect more the disadvantage than the advantage in the present generation. For instance, in cases that are well known in political practice, 
uh, when spending is reduced proportionally in all areas of public spending, like in the well-known situations in the US. Now, uh, I think it's uh, uncontroversial that experience shows that the BBR constraints often act in practice asymmetrically by leading to more reductions in the financing of social programs, of public goods, and so on, uh, than in other areas. If that was an accident due, for instance, to political pressure, uh, we could neglect it. But is it? Is it accidental? Suppose we reduce public spending by 10% in order to fulfill the BPR requirements, and this implies both 10% less money for police activities, and therefore more exposure of citizens to crime, and 10% less money for public health care. Uh, the asymmetry consists in the following. There are ways in which the affluent can, at least to some extent, compensate the increased risk of crime. They can, for instance, move to more secure neighborhoods, hire private security forces to protect them, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, the disadvantage can hardly find ways of compensation for the reduction uh, in the financing for basic rights. So what I would propose is the following idea, which it would be interesting to, to hear if it is acceptable or not, what are the objections. Threats to negative rights are more easily prevented by the affluent in contemporary societies than are threats to positive rights or basic rights of the disadvantage. If the BBR affect more the latter than the former, then I'm afraid social philosophy would say that is, it is not in order. Um, moreover, as we all know, spending reduction in some particular areas like defense, military spending, is seldom accepted for various reasons. Again, if the case is accidental, we could forget about it. But there are justified reasons to do that. For instance, the reason that individuals cannot make up for less national security protection due to uh, reducing uh, spending. by spending more privately to increase their security inside the state. So if you cannot improve your national security by spending privately, then it is quite reasonable to ask that the budget of the defense ministry be not reduced. Uh, but then it might be the case as we can see in practice, that reductions almost inevitably affect more spending for positive rights or social rights than spending for negative rights, which again has, of course, a lot of consequences on solidarity. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup de ces remarques extrêmement intéressantes et très précise, et notamment de celle que vous avez formulée dans votre deuxième préoccupation sur la réduction proportionnelle ou non des dépenses. Il est évident que la réduction proportionnelle est une solution facile pour toutes les autorités. Ça évite de choisir des priorités, mais avec des conséquences que vous avez évoquées. Alors, il y a peut-être un point sur lequel je ne serai pas totalement d'accord avec vous, je ne suis pas convaincu qu'une diminution de 10% des, crédits, des dépenses en matière de police conduise à, à diminuer de 10% euh, bon, la, la sécurité des citoyens ou à augmenter dans une telle proportion l'insécurité, parce que 
je ne suis pas sûr qu'on puisse mesurer de la sorte. Mais enfin, c'est une discussion simplement pour euh, montrer euh, que vous avez soulevé une, une vraie question. Euh, L'autre question qui est d'ailleurs derrière cela, euh, c'est quels sont les types de réduction de dépenses qui peuvent être compensés par euh, une augmentation des dépenses personnelles euh, Et ça, euh, c'est un, un enjeu euh, qui est extrêmement politique, euh, beaucoup plus qu'économique euh, ou social. Bref.